Hi there. Welcome to Business Leadership Podcast. In this podcast, I interview very successful business leaders and industry experts to share their knowledge and experience to help you grow your business. I truly believe that sometimes a single insight can completely change your business directions and help you achieve your business goals. In this episode, I interview Carolyn Ellis. Carolyn's been helping business leaders to uh, uh, transform complexity into clarity and achieve much higher uh, team engagement. She's the author of a new book, Lead Conversations That Count, How Busy Managers Run Great Meetings. She's an engagement specialist and a leadership coach. I think you will uh, enjoy my discussion with her, especially when she shares a perspective on her uh, count uh, leadership framework, uh, where I know leadership uh, leaders can um, by t- making small changes, add clarity and, and visualization to improve their communication as uh, with, with their teams, especially in an environment where we are working in a hybrid environment and some people at home, some in the office, I think her count leadership framework will be very effective to achieve that kind of t- uh, staff engagement. So before we go, your uh, feedback is very important to grow this channel. Don't forget to like or subscribe. I think the buttons either below the video or above the video. So don't forget to stay in tune for uh, future episodes and notification. Thank you so much. Enjoy this episode. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Hey guys, welcome to Business Leadership Blog. Today, my guest is Caroline Ellis. She's the author of uh, Lead Conversations That Count, How Busy Managers uh, Run Great Meetings. She's an uh, engagement specialist, facilitator, and a leadership coach. She's also a principal of Brilliancemastery.com. That's, uh, it's a boutique consulting and facilitation uh, firm that specializes in helping leaders transform complexity into clarity and engage their teams. Thank you so much for time, Caroline. Welcome to podcast. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm I'm very honored. Thank you. So, walk us through why this book and uh, what made you uh, inspire you to write this book, uh, Carolyn. <laughs> why? Why did I write this book? I sometimes wonder that myself when I was in the middle of trying to write it. Okay. Um, so, this book is really something that is, uh, I think, an end result of years of having worked with you know, groups of people in the boardroom, in conferences, in workshops and training, and um, really helping helping people have better conversations with each other. Mm -hmm. And why I I decided it was important to write this book now is I think that in the last several years, um, there's been a number of factors, certainly the pandemic has, I think, has had an impact on how do we connect and relate to people uh, as human beings, not just as colleagues or workers or team members. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, honestly, I think things have gotten, if you just think about our political dialogue we've had around the world in the last couple of years, people very polarized, um, unable to understand or unwilling to try to understand a perspective different than their own. Um, and I think the thing that really you know keeps me up at night worried is, we have a lot of really serious problems to solve in the world, whether it's, you know, mm-hmm. climate change or social injustice issues that need to be solved or like a whole plethora of really complex, really challenging existential problems, not just business problems, but like, just like, how do we survive as a species kind of problem? Mm-hmm. And I believe that the solution to any problem comes down to the quality of conversation and the quality of relationship that you have with the people. Because there's no one organization, no one government, no one individual who is going to be able to solve the kind of, you know, what are called big wicked problems that we have these days. So mm-hmm. if this book can be a contribution to helping people kind of remember, hey, we actually all need to find a win in this situation, even if we don't agree. Mm-hmm. And let's move forward together because, um, you know, like just think about your grandchildren or your great grandchildren. They're going to be looking back at you know our current generation and saying like, "What the heck were you all thinking? Mm-hmm. Why couldn't you figure this out?" So that's why I wrote the book. You know, searching this, you know, your book and searching your profile, I learn a lot. You know, some 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 yeah. of that item is around. You talk about visualization. You know, complex ideas. You know, business leaders usually have idea, but it's very hard to communicate that to the teams, right? So yes, um, and you help them visualize it many different forms. So yeah. where do you think the business leader struggle is, is that thinking about an idea, what needs to be communicated and build a plan or just that, you know, communication of that idea to the teams, where do you think the biggest struggles are? Oh, uh, all, all of the above, <laughs> but yeah. I just want to connect into like, I mean, part of the problem is uh, when we become overly reliant on one channel of communication, you know, I might say a word to you, you might say a word to me and we think it's the same word, but because of our, our, our history, our own personal filters, our cultures, our languages, 
we may have a different perspective on that. If anybody's ever been through a divorce process like I have, you think there's agreement on some things and then you realize, mm -hmm. uh, no, you don't see the world the same way. And you, that's why we have lawyers doing very well in business today. So mm -hmm. I think the thing is um, auditory, especially when we are in a, a time where our brains are really cognitively being taxed right now, spending a lot of time sort of with this remote or hybrid working situation, uh, the stress that we we're all feeling personally from this very prolonged global pandemic crisis and just navigating that day in, day out, that kind of chronic stress does mm -hmm. take a toll. So um, one of the things that I do and um, I've been doing for almost 10 years now is literally helping to draw conversations in real time as they happen. Mm -hmm. So what that does is it adds that visual channel of communication to the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I mean, I've been fascinated by roadmaps ever since I was a little kid. My undergraduate degree was in environmental studies. I was, you know, geography. So what's the map? And often the, the reason that people don't agree is because they're at different parts of the map and they think that they're standing next to each other. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. where this, um, you know, whether it's called graphic recording, I use a lot of visual facilitation frameworks in the in the meetings that I, I help to facilitate and that I design, because that really helps in a number of ways when you can sh introduce that visual framework mm -hmm. of the roadmap of the conversation, it does a couple of things. One, you've got a record of the conversation that people can actually refer back to. They're visually interested and curious about it. And it makes it easier to tell the story and get people aligned around that particular goal or direction, mm -hmm. even for those who weren't in the meeting. So that's one important thing is to help with the alignment and execution. It's great mm -hmm. to say you're going to do one thing in a meeting, but then people forget, they wander off, you kind of diverge. So it kind of keeps continually providing that compass for people to move forward. The other thing it does in a meeting, which I think is fascinating and so important is that it breaks apart that sort of headbutting that can happen in a meeting when people don't have the same perspective. So they're literally mm -hmm. locking horns with each other. You introduce, you know, like myself, I might be facilitating and sort of coaching, like, what are you saying? What are you saying? And we're building this map together. So they literally start to orient to mm -hmm. this other artifact that they are both or the whole group is creating. And so that way people, they feel seen and heard because their views are being shared on the map. They're starting to understand and make sense of, oh, now I understand why we have this different perspective is because I don't have that knowledge and you only have this data. So we need to find like, so you can identify synergies, you can identify gaps. Mm -hmm. you can, it helps to sort of elevate and make more apparent what are the priorities for action? Mm -hmm. So those are just a few of the reasons why, um, you know, I think when you can add some visual elements in, and I mean, our brains are just very naturally visual. I know some people mm -hmm. are like, oh, I can't draw. It doesn't matter if you can draw. I mean, yeah. honestly, I can't draw either, but I, I do this work and it is just because it's about helping people make sense of a mm -hmm. complex chaotic world yeah. you know five years ago um i, I read a book and, and i started doing this for different reason oh. um, i didn't know why it works but i i knew it's you know i knew i need so what i the reason i started doing was and you know at this at this day and age we don't have a shortage of information especially in my business oh. there's tons <laughs> yes. of information out there so Too i much. needed to so i needed to not only myself focus on our, you know goals we had you know the immediate goal we had i needed to be laser focused on our goals but I also needed my team to be focused on it. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I built 12 step plans. This is what we have. This is how we need to get to. And I post it around the offices. So if you, you know, see my office before oh. there's a signs all over the walls, you know, uh, you know, everybody's reading from the same thing. So we have mm -hmm. a signs on the computers as well, because this is the 10 step we need to get to there. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if it's going to go work, but it did work. It helped us, you know, biggest thing I can take away is allow us to focus on our same goals and we drive into the same steps, step by step. And yes. we're checking with each other. How are we doing with the step one? How are we doing with the step two? Yeah. It kind of worked for us, but I don't know why it works. So why do you it, think the visualization works? You know, that's what I'm trying to. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's fantastic. So you're already ahead of the curve because you are doing this kind of thing. And I really think that, uh, you know, in, 10 years if people are having important conversations or events and there isn't some element of 
visualizing that discussion, people are going to be like, oh my God, they just expected me to show up this meeting and like read the minutes of it afterwards. Like what? So, so what, I mean, why it works, I think is a couple of reasons. And there's uh, Dan Rome, R-O-A-M. He's written a number of books um, about, you know, visual thinking, why it works. He, he wrote The Back of a Napkin. He wrote um, A Draw to Win. So he's got a lot of really great resources out there. So if your viewers are interested in that, they can check out Dan Rome. But uh, I mean, our brains are essentially visual. Mm -hmm. So um, there's about 66% of our brain function is actually dedicated to uh, visual processing. When you add just the smallest bit of something visual to text, whether it might just be putting a box around some text, even that alone Mm -hmm. helps to improve retention and recall by about 33%. So, um, and when you're, when you're in the act of either doing like you did, you sort of mapped out your 12 steps, or you're witnessing somebody doing it, it is, it really fires up a lot of your senses, you see it happening, you hear the words being spoken, if you're doing it yourself, Mm -hmm. you know, you're taking your your sketch notes, or whatever, you're having that kinesthetic experience, and plus, it's fun. So your heart gets really excited. And that curiosity of a child kind of awakens inside of you. Mm -hmm. So when you have all of those elements, that curiosity, all senses are firing fully. uh, It's like, it's like your brain just goes on steroids and your, your engagement Mm -hmm. in the information is radically different. I mean, how I came across it, actually, I used to be one of those people um, who was like an incredible note taker, you know, way back in high school, people would always want to borrow my notes. And, um, and then when I got, you know, later uh, going to trainings or workshops, and then the, the day came when I could, you could bring it like computers are small enough. You could bring in your own laptop. And I would just like, be typing but you know what I would come back from those experiences with like 35 pages of notes with like Mm -hmm. notebooks full of stuff and I wouldn't implement them Mm -hmm. why because I had just transcribed the information I hadn't Mm -hmm. made meaning of the information Mm -hmm. and when you say there's so much information out there you are absolutely right and there will be more information tomorrow than there is today and we're already drowning in it yeah so it's that that choice point. And I do teach people, you know, how to how to incorporate visual tools and visual thinking into their work. And one of the biggest struggles people have is they're like, oh, I feel like I'm going to miss something. And, that's, and mm-hmm. my answer is you're already missing it. Yeah. You think you're listening to it. Mm-hmm. And in an hour's time, you will forget a huge percentage of it. So mm-hmm. if we can just give ourselves permission to say, you know what? That's an interesting point. I'm going to write that one down. I'm going to let those other eight go. Because guess what? If you really are, if it's really important for you, you can just Google it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> later when when that little thought bubble comes by and says, "Oh, you were curious about this yesterday," you can you can search that stuff up. It's not going anywhere. There's just mm-hmm. more of it. So, for me, it's it's really um, incorporating visual frameworks into whatever kind of work you do is really about supporting you with being more decisive, being more discerning Mm -hmm. about what's important to you now. Mm -hmm. And if we can get better at that, I mean, you know, people are like, Oh, we've got to learn how to manage our time better. I'm like, you know what? It's not the time. Mm -hmm. It's the, the brain, the bandwidth that we freely let a bunch of stuff populate in our minds. Mm -hmm. And we need to become much more discerning and, and say, you know what? No, I'm not doing that now. I'm going to implement more, consume less. And I think especially for business leaders, there's a lot of pressure to, you know, know so much about everything. And, you know, to, you, you need that focus. And that's why you get paid the big bucks, right? As a business leader, it's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. what's yeah. the focus? You know, you're trying <laughs> to set the course and it's not easy work to do. Yeah. You know, when I went around the office and started putting those signs up all over the, you know, the places and know my team and asked me you know you're doing it for me I said no no I'm, I'm doing this for me not not for you <laughs> yeah. um you know I just need to keep looking at these things and especially uh, when I'm sitting yeah. sitting back in a chair in office and I can see that uh, my goals and all my paths of what I need to do and a, a task I need to accomplish to get to the goals they all posted mm-hmm. on my walls and all I can see is that nothing else so it keeps me mm-hmm. focused again it keeps me engaging yes. and you know some stay, stay stay on a task until Excellent. you meet those goals that's so, that's so great and even the simplest little thing that you've got on your map yeah. Your brain will suck that up and 
it will recall the whole thinking that you had about like, why was that particular step important? Or what was that principle about or that client experience? So these little, little tiny visual kind of anchors Mm -hmm. support that ability to pull out the whole gamut of like, why this policy is important, why this step is the essential next thing for us to do. So business leaders, you know, who, who they're not doing it, you know, at, at the moment, what would you say, where do they start, um, you know, if they want to visualize what, they, what they're trying to achieve? So mm-hmm. where does the process start from them? They need to start, you know, build their goals first, their plans first before they visualize it, I guess, right? So what, what, what point yeah. do they start if they want to go on the process of doing it? Well, I, you know, I think, I think the, yeah, I think one of the answers is, you know, you need to start with something that works for you. And um, does, you know, the system that you use most frequently is the one that will be the best for you, as opposed to like the one that you kind of dabble in and then you veer off in a couple of days time. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you know, I think that, you know, like for for some people, like whether it's like having a whiteboard, using sticky notes so that you sort of break away from the tyranny of the keyboard Mm -hmm. to really let yourself think a little bit more outside the box can be great. Uh, and when you're, you know, when you're doing your thinking and just like, well, like, what are all the issues that we have? Let yourself sort of generate those things first okay. and then try to make some sense and order of it. So that's why I'm a big fan of sticky notes. Honestly, even if you, you know, if you are writing your ideas down, turn your page landscape mm-hmm. instead of this way. It's amazing what that will do to your mentality about just having a little bit more spaciousness to be able to move things around. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's important, but honestly, I think, you know, whether it's, you know, using visual tools, I think the thing for leaders, and this is something that I, I really stress in, in the book is your ability to lead yourself mm-hmm. is, is mission critical. It's the first thing you need to start with. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I do share in the book um, something I call the count roadmap, which is mm-hmm. like, it's a map because it's visual, but it's a process for you as a business leader to really, how do you calibrate yourself? That's the C in the word count. How do Mm -hmm. you really get yourself kind of ready to have that conversation with your team or, you know, run that next retreat or whatever it is. So there's, there's, there's ways that you can sort of, you know, anchor and map effective behaviors and choices. Um, So it's a, it's a nice blend of sort of, personal mm-hmm. reflection, uh, relationship tools, and the visual. So that you, you know, you're literally following the map and then you're prepared before you get into that session. Yeah, I see. Okay. So you can't wait. I mean, I think that's especially true for us, you know, in terms of meeting, meeting culture these days, mm-hmm. you can't wing it. Like yeah. back in the olden days, you could just like, Oh, I'll just wear, Oh, it's in this boardroom. Okay. I'll just, you know, you've got the agenda and you feel prepared. Well, the technology is like, it's, you know, you, you know, this, like, you're like, what's the zoom link? Are we on the right thing? You know, whose mm-hmm. mic is on? Like what cameras, like, where's the light? Like there's a lot of more that we need to, to think and design differently than when we were in person, even those, mm-hmm. like those little moments of connection time. Yeah. So I, th- I think that that's, that's like actually a big mistake that people make is yeah, that's- it's all about the content and the information and they're forgetting about the need to connect with people and build relationship. Yeah, that that you know that you know that's the see what you mentioned that you know uh, you know to focus on yourself and, and prepare. I mean that that's the most critical piece in my mind. You know, you, that's your preparation yes. for meeting, right? You got to prepare yourself. If you don't have a right mindset, what I know how you're going to handle the conversation. Right. How could you even handle the conversation, right? So you need to spend time fix your thought right. process where you, and you get your mindset right. What are you trying to have a conversation about? I guess right. Yes. Yes. I mean, you know, the first step is like like let's get you clear. Mm -hmm. Um, then the O, uh, so we've got calibrate, the O is for orient, orient is about, okay, so now you've really got your, you know, you, you realize like, what's the qualities you need to bring into the meetings? What are the things that are distracting you or bugging you that you need to maybe leave outside that meeting? So you can be really present to what's going to happen in this discussion. Mm -hmm. But the O is orient yourself to what would be a win for your people? What are they need? So you really have to step in their shoes and, and show up with some empathy and really mm-hmm. understanding. So you're, you know, doing that whole, you know, start with the end in mind, mm-hmm. but not from a, not necessarily a technical issue, but from that sort of personal, 
what's the journey that these people are on right now and what do they need at the end of it? So how do you gotcha. sort of match those, those pieces, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Very yeah. interesting, especially times like these, you know, there's so much happening, people going through so many in the personal life and professional life, you know, with, with the health issues and so many other issues, you need to be totally. mindful of people's, uh, you know, feeling how they're feeling before you yes. get into discussion. So, yeah. so people working in a hybrid mode, I hear, like, you know, some in office, some in some at home, um, mm -hmm. meetings is one of those critical items we need, you know, how do we effectively communicate in meetings? Where you see where people are uh, making mistakes um, or when you have in a meeting in a, some people are remotely, some in an office, or they're trying to communicate effective yeah. ideas you know, through the meetings, where mm -hmm. you see the biggest mistakes that people are making? Uh, well, I think one of the biggest mistakes is, is really not, not doing the thinking ahead of time and putting like the content in front of the connection. See. So, I, I mean, one of my one of my pet peeves is when you show up at a meeting and you know maybe you're a minute early or it's not quite started yet, and they're like, "Oh hi," <laughs> and so you saw that you're like, "Okay, I'm ready to go." You know, I've got the dog handled. Nobody's gonna bark, and then all of a sudden, like, it doesn't matter that you just showed up on screen. So, yeah. like, having that little coffee connection time, you know, like getting your coffee, you're talking about like, "Oh hey, how was your weekend?" Or oh, "Nice shoes." I like your, you know, like. Those little personal things, like they don't seem like they're that business important, mm -hmm. but those are like the little relationship builder connection points that we need to design into our, even our virtual sessions, especially, you know, the hybrid ones where the people who are maybe working together in that same physical space, they'll have that sort of rapport naturally. Mm -hmm. And the people who are beaming in from wherever will feel a little on the outside, unless you really design ways to kind of equalize that relationship slash power mm -hmm. imbalance that could be existing. Mm -hmm. So not, not putting the people first, that's a big mistake. I think the other thing is people getting so focused on like, oh my gosh, we got to just get it all done and we have an hour to do it. So just packing that agenda full and having it become more of a presentation than an actual discussion. I so, I mean, if people want to sit and stare at a screen and just watch somebody else talk at them, that's what they do at nighttime when they're binging their Netflix series, right? Mm -hmm. So that's not a very engaging work environment. And, you know, people will tune that out very quickly. I think our attention span is probably getting a little shorter. I think our, yeah. our, our well of patience with each other is getting, you know, drained through all of this chronic stress from the pandemic and everything and all the changes going on all the time. Mm -hmm. So how do we kind of leave what I call a little bit of space, a little bit of breathing room mm -hmm. to have a little back and forth. So, so what does that look like? Throw people into breakouts more often, you know, really yes. use that chat, like, like use it like you mean it. We have the, the gift, all, all these wonderful tools and our, our learning curves. We've really come up a long way since it all started almost two years ago, mm -hmm. but there's still like more that we need to do to continually engage people because if they're not feeling heard, they're not going to care. And mm -hmm. it just perpetuates that whole problem of disengagement that there is in a lot of organizations. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the challenge is, and again, this is like, my book is really you know targeted more for those people who are, at that management level, they perhaps are really good at the tech skills, but they haven't had as much experience yet with the people and the soft skills. And yet they have a huge impact on, on the engagement level of the people who work for them. Yeah. Uh, so, so we need to get meetings to be better. We need to support managers to do a better job of those things. Mm -hmm. So that, because as I said at the beginning, we've got a lot of serious problems we need to solve. Yeah. You know, it's not just about like next quarter results. It's about how do we, how do we, be kinder to each other. How do we really do better for our clients? Because if people are mm -hmm. feeling cranky, your clients are the first ones who will notice that. Yeah. I mean, when we were in an office, uh, you know, a couple of years before, um, you know, building that human relationship and, and, and that rapport with each other around the water coolers or, or, you know, walking around in the hallways, easy to build that rapport. Then when you go in a meeting, you can knock down item by item and, and get out of it as soon as possible, right? Because you, <laughs> you already have a rapport, build that relationship with the person because you were just, just ran into them a couple of minutes ago, right? Yes. But in, in, a, in a, you know, in a Zoom or, or in, a, in a meetings that, you know, um, uh, online meetings, you don't have that rapport going on, you know, um, you mm -hmm. don't have that rapport, but you're not running into each other um, mm -hmm. in a hallway or for, you know, getting together for coffee. So I think you, yeah. you're right about that. We intentionally have to build, you know, the time for it into the meeting to build that rapport and human connection. Yeah. Um, in the yeah. Meeting. So, interesting. You know, 
it, it, it's it's so I'm, I'm I'm glad you you sort of see it that same way as well. And I you know one thing that I sometimes hear from leaders is they're like, oh, but if I put I can't be in every breakout room, so like I don't know, like I can't do that. And and I literally had to say, it's not about you. Like your 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 team needs to talk to each other. Like breakout spaces are great just for connection, just for building some energy in that relation, then bring them back. It could just be a simple little thing. You don't have to, it's not, again, focusing too much on the content. What if I miss something that they say in the five breakout yeah. spaces and I'm only, it's like, you know what, sometimes that's going to matter. And quite often it's not because you're doing it as a way to sort of nurture that team environment. And I think that's part of your job as, as the leader is, You've got to be like the gardener. You got to till the soil. You have to pull out the roots. You got to add the fertilizer. You have to really tend to that garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, you know, it's you know, my world. You know, technology is a uh, you know for my staff, technology is you know the fingertips. They have all the technology, but you know that's where you need to focus more on a human relationships. You know, it's a harder, more you involve in the technology, harder you have to work on the human connections. I think that's uh, that that's yeah. where where you, where you you know good good point. What, yeah, what do you think about conversation that count um, in your book? And I looked at a couple, you know, a couple of your blogs as well. You're talking about the conversation that count. What do you, what do you mean by that, Caroline? What, what does yeah. that mean to you? Yeah, I I, I kind of started saying it, and I, I like, you know, I, I I like the way it sounds together. But conversations that count are the ones that have impact, the ones that are memorable. So whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation or if it could be a, a conversation that's in a group setting. The conversation that count is one that really has some sort of a deeper imprint on you so that when you get that invitation for that next meeting slash conversation, your reaction is not going to be, oh, no, it's going to be like, awesome. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. So it's it's something that is um, it's it's effective and it's productive, but it also recognizes and acknowledges the you know really the privilege it is to work with good people and to mm -hmm. have that kind of reciprocity and respect so that's what i mean by a conversation that count not one that's just oh i had to have this talk with you performance appraisal i gotta check the box and say that yeah. i did it it's it's something that's like really like two human beings or a group of human beings having a, an important conversation to each other where they all leave feeling like you know what that was a good, that was a really good use of my time and energy and I'm willing mm -hmm. to do it again. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. You know, mm -hmm. definitely, you know, where people work in, we, we always talk in our team that, you know, don't work to your quota, work to your potential. Um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, working to your potential, definitely, you know, you need that meaningful conversation. You need to inspire people. You need to stay engaged. Uh, it's a hard work, but that's, that's the work you need to put in, especially yeah. with, the, with the remote, you know, connections. You know, when you inspire humans, you work together. You definitely work yes. much, much higher level than a quota. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, without that, there's just so much, uh, you know, we talked about it, disengagement, friction, you know, work doesn't get done, work has to get redone. So all of these things, and I, like, I, I think we're, you know, with this baseload of stress, people being cranky, and it's just like our tolerance for, oh, mm -hmm. you know, Jim didn't do what he said he was going to do again. And then when he finally did it, it looked like the dog ate his breakfast and it's, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to redo that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we want to really get people feeling like they have some, some real skin in the game and they'll have skin in the game and they feel like their voices are being heard. Interesting. Let's talk about brilliance mastery. So how do you help a business leaders, Caroline? Now, you know, when business leader come to you, what kind of, you know, challenge they up against, you know, how do you help mm -hmm. them? And yeah, and, uh, yeah, no, it's a great question. And, and I, 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 I do call myself sort of like a boutique consulting because I, I do a variety of things. But I think that the, the main um, piece of work that I'm doing with clients right now is that they are needing to um, speak with you know, their teams or whether it's a strategy retreat. And they really are trying to solve some sort of a significant problem, whether it's about engagement, whether it's about some disruption to their marketplace. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to figure out what do we want? How do we create that vision? So sometimes it's for strategic planning retreats. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll work with people around, um, you know, getting, getting some input from their stakeholders or their clients and really helping them get better intelligence on the people that they're serving, both internally and also externally to the organization. Mm -hmm. So really those kind of more high stakes types of conversations that are not just, um, 
you know, let, let's figure out how to run this project smoother, but a little bit more at the strategy and visionary level of how do we move forward um, and move forward in such a way that we bring everybody along with us. Mm-hmm. So really the issues that I support my clients with are around, um, as I say, strategy, team performance issues, I do coaching around leadership and, um, and, and just sort of being better human beings with each other mm-hmm. around the tables. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also, I also work a lot with clients around um, participant engagement strategies. So they may already have a particular uh, session or something planned and I'll come in to support them, whether it's through, you know, visual facilitation, I might end up facilitating part of it. I will really work with them to create an agenda that will pull out the best from the, their people and not have them I be see. tuned out. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, um, you know, clients, it, you know, when you're so in the day to day of it, it's kind of hard to step back. So, you know, so when the, what is it, you can't see the, the forest for all the trees or whatever yeah. that crazy expression is. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's, it's really about trying to, like, you know, navigate the complexity of life and come out with greater clarity and consensus and mm-hmm. alignment to making, making sustainable change happen. Yeah, I know um, I, I, I can speak for myself, but I know a lot of business leaders, you know, our business leaders, you know, we are in a business because we have a unique idea how we want to, you know, either build a product or build a services, right? Um, mm-hmm. You have a vision in your head, but sometimes communicating that to your people and communicating in such a way that you can bring everybody on the same page, it's a mm-hmm. challenge. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we can use all the help we need in that case that, you know, somebody like you can come and say, listen, you know, your idea. Let's yeah. visualize it. Let's let me explain that to, you know, walk you through exactly. how you can explain to your you know, people and bring them on the same same level. I think yeah. that's a great help for any business leader who's trying to get the idea from the head to put yeah. on a piece of paper and then I'm trying to bring it to you. Exactly. Them. I mean, I really think that there are three sort of mega elements for solving any sort of business leader problem. Yeah. <laughs> one, one is about the lever of like what's your what's your presence? How how prepared are you as the leader, you know, by leading yourself. So having that presence and the ability to really influence and communicate and inspire people rather than sort of just flying in when the stress is really high. So like that, that I think is really important. So the presence is part of it. I also support people with perspective. So understanding the context of the work, you know, that word that what we talked about originally, like, like where on the map are we? Mm -hmm. So, and being willing to step in and see and appreciate the different perspectives that might be around. So having a clear idea of context and perspective is really important. And then the third element is, is about the plan. So Mm -hmm. what's going to happen now and how do we make it not just like, what's the easiest next thing to do, but what's the most effective leverage priority next thing to do. And what's our sustainable system Mm -hmm. to ensure that that plan has some legs, you know, beyond just, you know, 30 seconds after the meeting's over, right? Yeah. So having some structure in place in, in that you build in from the beginning so that, that you have that alignment through execution and that it's on this and 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 that you have the ability to say, oh, you know what, we're two months into this project. It's not working. We need to, you know, we need to review this. We need to recalibrate this. We need to recommit in our agreements about how we're going to get this done. Mm-hmm. So with those three elements, you know, presence, perspective, and the plan, you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And not only it can help you, you know, uh, you know, get your team on the same page, but also I think it's more for business leader as well. It gives you a lot more clarity when you, you know, when an idea, there's something, there could be a lot of items that you haven't considered an idea when you visualize something or when mm-hmm. you're trying to, you know, come from that clarity uh, angle, it, it mm-hmm. help you clarify your idea as well. Maybe you need to, you know, tweak a little bit here and there. Exactly. exactly. How about the teams? Um, So business leader have those ideas, but they need to break it down on each department. So do you get involved in, you know, department managers or, 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 uh, you know, department leaders as well? So break it down on a a smaller sections as well? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, for example, one time I I was working with the COO of a pharmaceutical company and they, you know, they had some issues with how things were, you know, the products were being delivered and were they on time? So they, some of their departments had some silos and didn't really appreciate sort of the knock-on effects of somebody not meeting that deadline and how it impacted everybody else. So we did some, some work with that client to really look at helping people to really understand at the, at the departmental level and the individual contributor level, Mm -hmm. what's your contribution to the vision of this company? Like, do you understand the vision 
And do you see how you can really have an impact and a contribution to that? So really helping to um, get people aligned towards that bigger picture, because I think just through the, you know, the rapidity of that particular uh, organization's growth, and they added a lot of staff. So some of that was had been missing. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the scope of, uh, you know, who who needs to, you know, bring me in. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, definitely everything, I think a lot of the example and the the bars get set at the senior level. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if that's not aligned, if it's not sort of congruent with the values that they say they have, Mm -hmm. you're going to have everything breaking down underneath that. So sometimes the the work that we do is about clarifying, you've got these values. So what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. What what does that look like in terms of how you speak to each other? What does it look like in terms of the mindset? What does it look like in terms of the specific behaviors that, you know, if I was coming in with a documentary crew, I could see that in action. So helping to kind of make them not just nice fluffy sounding words that you find by the side of the elevator, Mm -hmm. but that they're so embedded and lived values, not just talked about values. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Where you see um, from your experience, we've been working with many years with the business business leaders. Where is one of some of those biggest mistakes people make, you know, when business leaders, you know, think they want to do that or they want to start this process where you think Mm -hmm. they short change themselves or they make some mistakes that, you know, they could, they could get better when. Well, you know, I, I think there's still a big shift going on in the business world from that hierarchical to a more collaborative culture. And I think some industries and businesses are farther ahead on that spectrum than others. I think when the stress gets high, that tendency to perhaps revert back to like, okay, no, now I got to tell everybody what to do because they're not doing it the way it should be done. Mm -hmm. We kind of, kind of default back to that. And And so what I would say is I think one of the challenges and opportunities really for leaders is to realize you you have a huge role and responsibility, absolutely, but it shouldn't all be on your shoulders. So being Mm -hmm. willing to ask more questions Mm -hmm. and being quiet after you ask them so that people can come forward. Mm -hmm. So whether you're mapping that out together, you're having a conversation I really encourage my, you know, my coaching clients to like stay curious and ask more questions because there is incredible brilliance in your team Mm -hmm. and in the stress of the moment, in the structure of, you know, not seeing each other as much, we sometimes forget to leave Mm -hmm. that space for that brilliance to be bubbled up and voiced and added to the picture. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people, you know, you've got great people around you. So tap into them. It yeah. doesn't have to all be on you. Mm-hmm. And that, that again, is another way we hear their voices, get their buy-in. They, you know, put their skin in the game because you've listened and are starting to implement their ideas. So it, mm-hmm. it's, and there's, I think, some alchemy that happens when a leader is willing to sort of have that level of humility and curiosity mm-hmm. where some, some people are like, Oh my gosh, like I, I never thought of that. And then they're like, I didn't. And so people building on each other's and ideas, it can be really exciting. And I love those moments in a meeting where people are like, oh my gosh. And like this whole new realm of possibility shows up that even the leader didn't think about, you know? So, but you wouldn't know unless you asked and yeah. listened. Yeah, you know, these people working with you, they, they understand your business very well, they understand technology, or they understand your product and services very well. Mm-hmm. So ideas has to come from these people because they they mm-hmm. they're living in and they, they know inside out your business, how how, how you run your business, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I very agree. interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. So business <laughs> leaders who who not uh, you know still um, looking for ways out, you know, a lot, a lot of business leaders in my field, uh, we are technical people, we had a technical background, we started a businesses, you know. Mm. Um, when you when you started that way, then then communication is one of the biggest challenge. Um, you know, and and uh, you know, you outlined a lot of uh, different ways of looking at many different things. I learned so much, uh, you know, just uh, doing a research uh, uh, on your blog. So what would you recommend if somebody wants to start this process, you know, what, what do, how do they start and, and how do they go about it step by step and start, um, you know, uh, working on their, their, uh, you know, uh, communication with their team? Oh, um, well, I, I definitely like, let me just toot my own horn. I do think that, you know, the lead conversations at camp book would be really helpful because it is really um, broken down to being something that someone who's feeling that kind of learning edge of, 
I got to be better at my communications. I mean, I understand it perfectly in my head, but when it comes out my mouth and I see their faces, they don't understand it the same way. Ah, mm-hmm. um, it, it's meant to be a, a practical handbook. So you can like read a chapter. There's very, like I give people like recipe cards, you know, add a few more of these ingredients, maybe take a few of these ingredients out and create mm-hmm. your own blend of what feels true to you. Okay. Um, but I mean, communication is, uh, you know, you can take courses and but I think it's, I think it really comes down to making a couple of core decisions. One is um, I, I think the curiosity is really key. Mm-hmm. So realizing that maybe, maybe asking more questions and listening more will provide you with more usefulness than you verbally processing all of your things and issuing them as directives to other people. Mm -hmm. So, so engaging in that and realizing that it needs to be a dialogue, which means a back and forth. There's got to be some sort of give and take Mm -hmm. in that discussion is really, is really key. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing that's really important for leaders is it's okay to, to say, I'm not exactly sure that I've understood what you said. Let me try to repeat that. So, you know, try some mm-hmm. reflective listening and being willing to say, I'm not really clear here. I need your feedback. So asking for help in some specific ways mm-hmm. and being honest and say, oh, I feel a little uncomfortable about this topic, but we need to get to it. So let's yeah. get to it. So there's something about a willingness to um, ask for help and expose a little bit of that vulnerability and being really authentic with people. You know, for most people, they respond really well to that. It Mm -hmm. gives them permission to not be, you know, perfect and have all the answers right there. So again, it kind of brings that humanness and the relationship back into focus. Very interesting. And, And I think, I think the third thing I would say too, is be willing to, um, I mean, feedback. So Mm -hmm. feedback in a constructive way is huge. So first of all, give yourself some feedback. So starting a practice of self-reflection, whether it's at the end of the day, end of a week, you know, basic questions, what worked really well, Mm -hmm. write that down somewhere. So you don't forget and you can do it again. What didn't work so well. So just really reflecting, where were you uncomfortable? Where did you see that you kind of put your foot in the mouth and you didn't mean to, but how do you notice what led to that? Mm -hmm. And what would you do differently? Yeah. So have that as a practice for yourself and you can then you know, bring that in as a practice for your team so that it normalizes that you're going to make mistakes, your team's going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And the only mistake is when you don't look at it and learn from it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That, that helped me when I started recording myself in the videos and, you know, just, you, can, oh. you can go back and play it and then you can see the oh. little mistake you're making. And then yeah, for I, me, you're a rock star at this. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I was when I started working on it, you know, the first my step was to start recording yourself mm-hmm. and you can start analyzing it and you can take a look where you're making a mistake in a communication. Are you getting mm-hmm. the message across what you intend to? Mm-hmm. So a lot of work, but definitely, yeah, that's, that's where, you know, I think that that's a great step um, to, to get better at these things. Oh, that's great. Good stuff. But, yeah. No, I learned so much, uh, you know, just uh, researching and definitely I can't wait for, for the book to arrive so I can uh, go through a book as well. I will recommend any business leaders who are out there, you know, they're looking to, uh, you know, get better at communication and also get your ideas across on the teams. So to t- take a look at your book and reach out to you as well. You know, even you well, read a book, you. sometimes there's a lot of uh, blind spots that you can't even, you know, uh, uh, understand. So, you know, somebody experts like you, you can definitely uh, cover a lot of blind uh, blind spots. I had, I had no idea, you know, I was doing some of that stuff, but I had no idea why I was doing it until you. uh, Yeah. 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 For our blind spots, they help us grow. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Where can people find you, Carolina? Where can they order this book? How can they connect? Yeah. With you? Well, um, if people would like to order the book, they can visit me at leadconversationsthatcount.com. Okay. Um, and my primary site is carolynbellis.com. And that sort of gives um, an oversight on the book, on my trainings, on my coaching. Um, so that's a great way to, to connect. And if anybody you know, thinks that they might need some help or just want to explore that possibility, just shoot me an email. We can set up a time to talk. Beautiful. Especially this time of the year, our business leaders trying to build a strategy for next year, what they need to communicate. So, yeah. you know, I will definitely encourage business leaders to reach out to you and get up uh, all the help AI that they can use. Um, oh, and, uh, you know, where can they connect with you? Just on a website, I guess, right? That's send you an email yeah. or, or how they connect with you. Yeah, they can, they can go to um, carolynbellis.com. And um, they can also, my, my email is carolyn at brilliancemastery.com. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, what we can connect that way. And uh, also, 
Let's meet on LinkedIn. LinkedIn yeah. is great too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Below this video, I'm going to include all your information as well oh. on the website as well. So well, they can click the link and they can that. get yeah, started. Yeah, that's great. Beautiful. Learned so much from you, Carolyn. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you. Oh, it's such a, such a great conversation. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate you doing this for business leaders. It really shows the kind of committed person you are to making a difference. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hi there. Thank you so much for investing time with us and watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this discussion. For next episode, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and send your feedback. Until next time, have yourself a great day. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.